Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft Season 6. Today we're starting things off just outside Hermitville at Siege of Doom, which is my minigame. And since the last episode, I have completely, completely finished this minigame. Now you may ask yourself, but hey Eskal, you already said that it was finished. And that's true. But what I've done since last episode is that I've installed all of the items into the shopping modules in both bases. And just to give you an idea, that is 20 shulker boxes per shopping module. And there are 8 shopping modules, so that's 160 shulker boxes that I had to allocate like this and then fill with all of these different items. So for example, in the weapon se sections, we got 10 boxes of stone swords, 6 boxes of stone axes, 3 boxes of iron swords and 1 box of diamond and swords and then in the tool section we got this in the same allocation and yeah it, it took me a few hours but I did it on a live stream and it was actually really really fun to do together with a few of you so I want to demonstrate how this works as well so I'm in the yellow base and I want to purchase some armor so what I do is I put five cobblestone into the shop and randomly I get a rarity this is an uncommon box the blue one and that holds an iron helmet and then I can take that out if I'm better at picking things up. And now I have an iron helmet to go to battle with. Which it may, not, it may not be the best thing to buy first. A more reasonable thing to buy first may be the tools. So let's do this one as well. So that is five cobblestone. And we got an uncommon as well. And the uncommon one in the tools has a fishing rod and scaffolding. That's a pretty good box for the PvP game, I'd say. So now that all of this is finished, we can actually finally play the game. And I have collected all the different people that signed up. And we have, in total, 12 hermits that are interested in playing, which is super fun. Now, I will say this. We actually had a planned date for when to play this game. And it was supposed to be done yesterday, my time. But three hermits got late cancellations due to illness and other things. And so I decided, rather than playing it with just nine people or eight people, we would postpone it another week till till more people can play because let's be honest I want as many hermits as possible to play this game now I want to say I'm extremely proud of this mini game and I think from a technical aspect and from a game balance aspect it's yeah it's it's a gemstone I'm, I'm really really proud of it and I cannot wait to play it but that's gonna be for another day so I hope that we get to do this very soon and I hope that you guys are excited to see it however it's time to head back to the mega mycelium base of doom and I can't stress this enough but it is so nice to have a fully fleshed out boat boat rail run tunnel boat rail run <laughs> boat rail run tunnel so I absolutely love this base that we are working on at the moment and we have got so much stuff to do that we haven't even got to the main sort of attraction yet, which is going to be a mega village trading hall of doom with a lot of nifty functions, etc. And the reason I haven't is because Moyang keeps changing <laughs> the villager mechanic in every pre-release and snapshot. But now it seems like in 1.14.4, we're actually going to get some, some rather OP things into villagers again, which they removed in 1.14.3. And I'm really happy about it. That does mean, though, that I have to hold off a little bit longer until I can raise my mastermind plan for, for this base right here. And I think that's a good thing, because at the moment, I have kind of been slacking a little bit with finishing things up. And I'm talking specifically about the Mega Smelter, which has now been here for like a month, and <laughs> the wood farm that we added the other day, which, by the way, this thing is absolutely fantastic. Specifically now that I added the AFK thing at the bottom, and you can just stand there AFK, it is... Ah, oh, it is, it is really good. A lie. I didn't fully finish the AFK thing, so we may want to do that as well today. We do need to have a restock of saplings as well. But what I want to get to is some building. And I really want to try and design something for our Mega Smelter. The only problem is it's really, really tough to sort of fit something around this that would make it work. I think one of the things that I really want to have is the visibility. So I want some sort of visibility to see what's going on in this machine. And this is something that I've lately, like, kind of fallen in love with. I've always worked towards hiding all my redstone, and we can do that in this machine as well. However, I think it would be really cool if these things specifically, but also a little bit of this, 
would be visible. And in addition to that, I really love having some stone tones in this base at the bottom. I kind of miss it in the main Xbox. <laughs> it is it is an it is an Xbox. So I'm going to do what I did with the creeper factory and add some sort of stone foundation. I'm going to mix this texture up as well in a little bit. And then I think I want to be brave. I want to see if we can use stripped oak logs instead of birch just to mix it up a little bit. When we started this base, I sort of had the idea that I didn't want to go with a specific style but build with whatever blocks that I felt fit that specific build. And for this thing, I mean, it is, it's a warm super smelter or mega smelter of doom, and I, I assume that there's a lot of heat here, so it would make sense if the wood tones are slightly darker than they would be for the other builds. And I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but I am absolutely in love with the new stained glass texture. I mean, I do play with the fancy glass, so it's connected textures with Optifine, but even without it, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. This is such a good texture change. And so, including glass in the build is definitely an easy option nowadays. And yeah, I think I want to go with grey. I was thinking of going with lime green because everybody loves lime green, including me. But yeah, I think it's going to be better with a sort of smoked out window here. And I saw that Mumbo has turned his uh, wood farm into a concrete blower upper. And uh, I'm, I'm jealous. I'm seriously uh, jealous. I think... I may want to do that one day as well, or build a completely new chamber, just because it's fun to have more buildings. Now, because we have this redstone line here, I have to switch up the design slightly, and this is always the fun, sort of challenging part with trying to build exterior after interior. But it's a way better way to do it, I feel, to build the exterior second, than to do the, the exterior first, because, well, now we can literally just build around it, and I think... Adding some sort of stability thing, like that, a big, fat, <laughs> dark grey concrete thing, I think will actually look really good. Right, how does that look? I think... I think I like it. <laughs> I think I like it. I mean, it looks a little bit weird right now, but I do think I like it. I really like the capping of these wood logs. And... That thing is looking very chunky though, which is good. We do need some stability into this build. I think I may add another one here as well, sticking out one. And that would then give us a third one somewhere over here. Then we got to deal with this thing. Uh, this thing will be tricky. I feel like this is really starting to take shape. It's definitely looking chunky. Very, very, very chunky. And a lot more mega than I was originally planning. I mean, yeah, this building is almost the size of the Xbox mega storage room at this point in time. But you know what? That's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. I am, or I have been struggling a lot with this area here. I think I've been now standing here, staring at this, trying to redo it for the past hour or so. And I'm not sure if I love it, but it's not bad. I really want a big window here. I really want to see the engine. And why the giant stone pillars? Well, I'm, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure yet. I just had the idea, though, that these could be chimneys. Yeah, chimneys. So we would have two chimneys, uh, if I can fly, two chimneys on either side. One there, one there, and then two over there. And if I can make it so that these chimneys extract smoke whenever we are smelting something, then that would be absolutely epic. I will say, though, <laughs> there's not a lot of space to do that in inside here. Um... Yeah, I may I may have to do some I may have to do some testing. Come to think about it, I haven't really ever played around with the new campfires. I haven't really played around with the automation around these, but the smoke particles that these output is absolutely brilliant. So I've come into my redstone test world and I haven't actually been testing stuff together with you guys in quite some while, but I did actually spend many hours on trying to make a concrete maker over there. And in the end, it totally blew up, so I left the project. But anyway, campfires, we're talking about campfires. So these things, if I'm not mistaken, mistaken, can be put out with a water bucket and they can be lit with a flint and steel. And both of these actions 
should be doable through a dispenser. So let's try the water bucket first. I should be able to put a water bucket in there and then use an observer like this. Actually, let's take that out for a second. Like this and then have a button. And so now if this is lit, I should be able to press that button and that puts the fire out of the campfire. And likewise, a dispenser with a flint and steel will ignite it. Okay, so that's easy enough. By using the observer, we make sure to double pulse the dispenser so it also picks the water up, which is great. Now the challenge is that we have a 2x2 two two chimney. And we want it to turn on whenever we smell something and turn off when we are done. And we can't really use the sides because the sides are going to be, or they are already, stone. Yeah, this may not be doable. One very interesting thing though is that the smoke travels through a solid block like a dispenser. Which means that I could possibly put dispensers on the floor fireplaces on top of that or campfires on top of that and then dispensers facing downwards on top of that it's still gonna be extremely problematic to power these though <laughs> extremely problematic okay so what about this solution here so instead of using four campfires we would use two campfires and we would power them from the side with the flint and steel and shut them off from the bottom now we are missing out on the height because we can't put a hay bale underneath but if we build this fairly far up, that's doable. This stone ring here represents the actual chimney. So this would also mean that I could hide all the redstone. The only tricky thing to run would be this wire here. But because our chimney is sort of only like that, and this is on the inside, I may be able to sneak a wire up on the very inside of this thing here. Right, so let's try this out. So we would have the wires, something like this, two torch towers, and then we start smelting something, this would be pulsed, and we would get smoke. We have to build this very high up though, because it's not very tall that smoke goes, unfortunately. And then we are done smelting, we send the pulse over here, and that puts it out. Yeah, I mean, this may be doable in the tiny amount of space <laughs> that we have. This is ridiculous. And I'm sure you can do this a lot better if you would actually know what you're doing. I may have done it using hay bales, which would be good because it's quite silly without the height. So that turns both campfires on. I think, and that smoke height is also adequate. Adequate, yeah, it, it's, that's good. <laughs> that's good. I, I guess I could remove one hay bale just to have it stacked differently, but I think I prefer having more smoke. Anyway, so that's that, and now, hopefully, it's so scary to use water and redstone, but that seemed to have worked. Yes. Now obviously these are just buttons, so I do need to link this up to the to the system down there. And I started this in the trickiest side, just so that I would be sure that I could do it over there. I should be able to cover this up and that up, and that is the only visible stone. And well, I guess uh, I guess that is a visible bit. Yeah, I didn't think about that, but I I think I could replace this glass for this observer right so let's see water puts it out good and then to power it we would power this torch tower nice i or torch tower observer tower i love observers observers are so good so that means we can get rid of this as well and completely cover this up yes i think that's all there is to it um, apart from uh, Apart from wiring this up, but that shouldn't be too hard. Okay, we have got a massive problem. I am out of observers and I'm out of redstone dust. I actually think I have quartz from doing my nether tunnel. Yeah, I got quite a bit of quartz if I need it. But I'm going to be limited making more observers and finishing this thing. Because I don't have redstone dust. That is absolutely <laughs> mental. That's, yeah. That is my last redstone dust right there. Okay, okay, bad news, bad news. Whoo! I, <laughs> I made my way back to the hub through my mega tunnel of doom. 
and it's not the first time I forget that um, I've sort of made a little bit of a death trap here. <laughs> Luckily, God Armor is insane, and I survived that. But that was uh, that was pretty scary. Anyway, we need to go shopping. <laughs> that was. Ooh, my heart is racing. Okay, having shaken off that lava thing, let's get some more redstone. And I do know that Sahara sells this, and I do know that Mumbo produces these things in his witch farm. But I really like Cherry Computers, despite it being a supporter of Concorp. I don't think this is actually benefiting Concorp. I think this is just benefiting Scar, and this is also the reason why he's so extremely rich on the server. But the prices are just... Yeah, they're just unbeatable. I've just realized that TFC sells gravel at nine stacks per diamond. I really wish he had some gravel because that is a fantastic prize. So this here should connect up the water dispensers. Actually, I need to do that. And hopefully that doesn't bud power anything. That's the one thing I'm worried about here, this piston. But that should be fine. That's taken from the input line there, so that should trigger whenever the machine turns on. Which is not what I want. Why did I, why have I wired that up? This is the line I need to wire up to that. This I need to wire up to... Oh yeah, that's true. It's kind of the same input-output line. Several frustrating wiring hours later... Yes! We have smoke in the chimney! When the machine is running, I can't believe it. Okay, this has been a nightmare to wire. I shouldn't say too much. Let's see if it also stops whenever this thing stops. I just realized that that may not be a thing. Okay, so that ran out and... Yes! I did it! I cannot believe it! It's been several hours of trying to wire these stupid things in this... Very, very tiny space, but there we go, that is all working. It had to do with timings and all of those sort of things in order to get that to work. But that is a beautiful sight. So now whenever the factory or smelter machine is running, we get smoke. And I gotta do that three more times, by the way. And whenever it runs out, it's calm and beautiful. And I'm just over the moon. I'm over the moon right now. So I guess I gotta get back to building because so far, well, I've only done half of a side. Of this thing. <laughs> I'm really struggling to try and get this chimney or these chimneys to look a little bit worn out or worn down. And trying to use some different heights, etc. I want them to look almost completely destroyed because, well, there would be a lot of pressure going through them when the massive engine runs, is the idea. And honestly, that is looking absolutely mega. <laughs> it's looking absolutely mega. It looks like some some real factory thing. I really like how these tones come together. And no, I haven't started with these chimneys over there yet. I haven't I haven't I haven't texturized them, okay? <laughs> I haven't texturized them. But the whole thing is really or has really come together. And like I said, I'm so happy I added in these big walls, etc. Or big whatever these things are, because they sort of make the whole build. And I am actually really happy that I decided to go with oak as well for this build. Now, weirdly enough, I haven't yet done anything in the actual part where the smeltering is happening. And I'm not entirely sure what I want to put here. I kind of like the idea of having it semi-open like this. But we would need a proper staircase or something. I just like the idea of this looking... To me, like an engine. I mean, it looks like some sort of piston bolt thing that goes on in here and that thing there that produces the fuel. It just it just works in my eyes. And this thing is absolutely insane when it comes to repairing my tools. I cannot believe how fast this thing is. Exuma is online and he's AFK. And it still is super, super quick. And yes, I, 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 I should have had a tutorial on this. I should have had a tutorial done. And I haven't yet done it. I need to get on that. What in the world has happened here? <laughs> so every now and again, I come back to my lab and I do some trading with Tom, the, the, the broken guy. Can you see him? I, I don't see him. He's gone. He's not here anymore. They are at least still here. So they, they're, they're fine. But someone has taken my Tom. So someone... I can't believe this. 
At least they left a trail. I mean, literally, where does this rail go? It goes here. Where there is just a water elevator up to the surface, I guess. Yep. I can't believe this. Someone has seriously kidnapped Tom. Or Timmy, or Bob, I can't remember his name, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Maybe, maybe I'm not a good dad for Tom, Bob, or Timmy. Because there are no signs or anything, I am currently suspecting the Ice Queen for this. Because technically, the villager is not just mine, it's a shared lab and yeah, I can totally see that. Aha! A lever that does nothing. <laughs> what the heck? But look here, behind the lever, there are villagers are you are you uh, bob bob hello bob i should say i made a name tag timmy tom bob if we do find him so that we won't lose him again i don't think yeah i think these are new villagers because they have the, why are these levers okay that did something oh i i'm confused oh okay <laughs> Yeah, I don't think our villager has any suit on. So I had a look at someone's certain last episode, Mistress Monster, and... Yep, he is here. He is here. Let me show you. This is actually pretty cool. He is... Inside this tree. And... Oh, I can hear him. Oh my goodness, there you are, Bob! Okay, let's just go ahead and name him so that we know who's who. Timmy Tom Bob. Yeah, perfect. Do you like your new home? Do you like sitting in this birch tree? With a secure apple look? Now, I don't entirely know what to do. If I should take this guy back, or if we should take him all the way to the new mycelium island, maybe? But for now, he's safe here, and since we have named him... Well, we will know if he gets replaced. I'm happy to see that he's safe. Now, I do really miss playing around with villagers, and I really hope that we get to update ASAP to 114.4 so that I can build my new trading hall, because I miss this place. I mean, this is one of the best ways to get OP in Minecraft, and at the moment, I mean, most of these guys are just locked out, even though this guy's mending trade is not locked out for some weird reason. And they are also the old villagers, so they don't have the discount options, etc, etc. So I'm really looking forward to playing around with that, and... I think, I think I'm gonna make like a 60 villager trading hall, like a really massive trading hall. And maybe Sahara will make profits based on the fact that we will have villagers once again. So yeah, it's a win-win. I also want to redo a, a potato farm and a carrot farm. You have to do these slightly different now, but they're still possible. Yeah, we got a lot of good stuff coming up. But anyway, dudes, that's going to do it for today. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. If you did, do hit the like button down below. And if you're brand new, consider subscribing. And I will see you dudes in the next episode.